Vassal Lomachenko managed to secure a 12-round unanimous points decision victory on the weekend over Jermaine Ortiz. I agreed with Judge John McKay, who scored it 115-113. That's an identical scorecard to mine. The other two judges were a disgrace, quite frankly, particularly Frank Lombardi, who had it 117-111 to Lomachenko. That's far too wide. But we've come to expect this kind of thing in boxing, where the fighter with the bigger profile tends to enjoy the favor of the officials. In any event, I did think that Lomachenko did enough to win. I thought that Ortiz faded very, very badly in the second half of the fight, which obviously he's going to be disappointed about. And a lot of people are going to be asking questions of because of the fact that he's the much younger man. You know, Lomachenko, 34, Ortiz, 26, eight-year difference. Shouldn't the older guy be fading in the second half of the fight rather than the younger guy? Well, stamina is not equal in every individual. Some people are going to have abnormally good stamina. So by the time they're 34, they're still going to have better stamina than the average 26-year-old fighter. On top of that, I think Ortiz was very intense. In the early rounds, he was hyper-focused. And I think that may have drained some of his energy. And on top of that, he's not as experienced as Lomachenko, so perhaps he's not going to be able to pace himself as well. And I think this was his first 12-rounder as well, so you have to take that into account. Now, early on in the fight, however, Ortiz was pretty impressive. He was a real good sharpshooter. His left hook in particular, the Czech left hook, landed on multiple occasions against Lomachenko. He actually buzzed Lomachenko and put a bruise under his eye. The slow-mo replay that they showed wasn't the actual punch that bruised Lomachenko's eye. Or it certainly wasn't the punch that backed him off and hurt him. I think it was in the second or third round because they showed us a slow-mo shot where it was the wrist of Ortiz that caught Lomachenko. No, no, you go back and watch the actual round in full speed, you'll see that a punch catches Lomachenko on, on his eye or just below his eye. And that, I believe, is where the bruise came from. Or at least, as I said earlier, that's certainly where Lomachenko was hurt. That's the shot that seemed to buzz him. Lomachenko backed off. So Ortiz was impressive early on. He was switch hitting, very fluid, very fast and matching Lomachenko when it comes to the footwork. Now, I spoke in the pre-fight video about the layoff that Lomachenko had going into this fight. And the reason I highlighted it is, one, because of Lomachenko's age, and layoffs tend to hurt older fighters more so than younger fighters, but also because his previous longest layoff, as far as I can remember, was going into the Tiafimo Lopez fight. And we all know what happened there. So... Did the layoff affect Lomachenko again here? Because he didn't exactly look like vintage Lomachenko. Well, it's hard to say for certain because there are a number of factors that could have affected the competitiveness of this fight. Again, there's Ortiz's talent. There's also Ortiz's size because Lomachenko looked absolutely tiny next to this guy. <laughs> and it's not the first time in this weight division that that's been the case. Lomachenko, of course, was lightweight in the amateurs but these lightweights in the pros are really walking around at way 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 above 135 pounds i can't imagine lomachenko rehydrates to that big a mass you know i'm sure he's over 135 but i don't think he's anywhere near as big as some of these young guys he's been fighting so yeah the size i think was an issue for lomachenko the uh i guess time out of the ring might have affected him at the very least, I can't imagine his time out of the ring did him any good. For some fighters, it may do, having a long layoff, a year or whatever. But in most instances, it's going to make you rusty, particularly when you're this age. And yeah, I think we also have to give Ortiz a lot of credit for his skills and ability. Fast fighter, fluid fighter, faster and more fluid than many of the guys Lomachenko would have fought in his career. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Did Lomachenko show his age here? I know Jorge Linares has come out and said that he thought Lomachenko didn't look the same. And, you know, yeah, but what it, what is it that caused him to not look the same? That's the question. Maybe we need to see him in there against the Devin Haney because some people are saying that it could be the ring rust combined with the fact that Ortiz isn't an undisputed world champion. Maybe Lomachenko couldn't get up for the fight as much as he could a Devin Haney or somebody with a higher profile. 
And we'll find out if and when that fight happens. And of course, Devin Haney and his dad Bill were there at ringside to watch. I can't imagine based upon what they saw that they'll be overly concerned about Vasyl Lomachenko. Not that they're not going to prepare diligently because Devin Haney is that type of consummate pro. But I don't think they would have seen anything that is going to put the fear in their heart. So, yeah. Anyway, back to the fight. Ortiz was doing very well, very well early. The check left hooks were landing. His footwork was very good. He was more than matching Lomachenko for his feet early on. Lomachenko wasn't getting the kind of angles that he normally does or vintage Lomachenko would. But again, you don't know how much of that is down to Lomachenko aging and how much of that is just down to Ortiz's own good footwork offsetting Lomachenko's footwork. I mean, if you remember when Lomachenko fought uh, Luke Campbell, he wasn't doing a lot of that crazy footwork in the first half of that fight either. Do you know what I mean? So again, maybe you can offset a lot of the stuff Lomachenko does just by keeping him at range, keeping, on the, keeping him on the end of a jab so he can't get close enough to you to start stepping around and doing all that fancy stuff. So yeah, anyway, Ortiz, very impressive early, fast, sharp, fluid. But one thing about him is that he fights with his hands down. Now, early in a fight, that can be an advantage to a flashy, fast, athletic fighter like Ortiz because he's bringing jabs up from near his knee, really, and it's coming outside of the field of vision of his opponent a lot of the time. And that's why these kind of jabs, they call, sometimes refer to as an up jab, can be effective because your opponent won't see him. I used to use that jab myself sometimes. So keeping the hands down may have helped Ortiz to some extent early on. And it also helps in terms of uh, staying loose and relaxed and all that kind of thing. But as the fight progressed and Ortiz started to slow down, he didn't adjust his defense accordingly, i.e. start putting his hands up. And therefore, the shots that he was uh, making Lomachenko miss with early in the fight started to land later on in the fight, let's say from the halfway stage, increasingly. And the favorite combination for Lomachenko in this fight was the reverse one-two, where he'd, he'd fire the uh, left hand first and then kind of a straight right, or sometimes it was like a right jab, sometimes it was more like a right hook. But yeah, the reverse one-two was a favorite of Lomachenko in this fight. And as I say, landing more and more frequently as things progressed and Ortiz slowed down. And Ortiz never made the adjustments. And I guess that is an experience there because he, again, should have kept his hands up, should have done something to stem the flow of a, a steady stream of Lomachenko punches coming at him. Lomachenko never got into that irresistible groove that we saw, let's say, in Lomachenko's prime. He never really got into that, never got to the point where he was totally overwhelming Ortiz. He was outboxing him, yeah, but not overwhelming him. And, you know, Ortiz was able to see the final bell. There was never any stage where it looked like, at least to me, Ortiz was going to get stopped. If anything, the person who appeared to be more hurt or the most hurt at any one particular time was Lomachenko in that early round when he got caught with a left hook. So anyway, Lomachenko busted down the stretch and he took a unanimous decision, which again, I agree with. I thought he won it by, you know, two rounds, three rounds, something like that. The crazy scorecard that one of the judges had was ridiculous. Uh, but there you go. So let me know what you guys think about Lomachenko's performance here. And how do you see him doing against Devin Haney, presuming that fight gets made? Haney, of course, may does he have one fight left on a top-ranked contract? I know he obviously had the two fights with George Cambosis and he's fulfilled those obligations. But was there a third fight in that contract? I forget now I cover so many boxing news stories you guys are gonna have to jog my memory and if he does have a third fight will Bob Arum even risk Lomachenko against Devin Haney obviously Lomachenko has lost a couple times now he's an older fighter and when fighters get to that stage of their career their promoters do tend to take more risks with them because they're not as much of an asset as they used to be so, you know, maybe he'll try and cash Lomachenko out against Devin Haney. At the end of the day, who else is Lomachenko going to fight at 135 pounds? Would Bob Arum try and make, I don't know, 
a catch weight with Ryan Garcia or maybe a fight with Tank Davis or something like that? Does he think that that would be more lucrative than fighting an undisputed with uh, Devin Haney? I don't know. Um, and again, this all comes down to the contract situation. Would Bob Aaron be willing to have Haney fight Lomachenko or Lomachenko fight Haney, whatever you, way you want to see it? Obviously, Haney's the champion. Would he be willing to go through with that fight without having options on Haney? Do you know what I mean? Or, or is he perfectly happy to allow Haney to fight Lomachenko and if he beats him, just sail off into the sunset? You guys let me know what you think. And also, maybe I'm making a, a huge oversight here. I'm not sure if Lomachenko is mandatory. Is he mandatory for any of Haney's belts? Because if he is, then uh, maybe there won't, hopefully, there won't be a rematch clause in the contract. And... We need to hold Bob Arum to his word, by the way. And he's already broken his word anyway, right? <laughs> right? But uh, we need to hold him to his word because he, of course, has been lambasting Eddie Hearn for having all these rematch clauses in contracts. So if Haney fights Lomachenko, yeah, let's hold Bob Arum to that. No rematch clause in a contract. One-off fight. Well, that's assuming it's a mandatory, right? If it's a voluntary defense by Haney then I guess you have to accept a rematch clause in the contract, right? But when it comes to mandatories, no. I just cannot tolerate mandatory fights having rematch clauses. It's just, no, nah. <laughs> we need to stop that in boxing. Anyway, let me know what you guys think.